You have to kill a curse. You're not killing a curse. And you sure as heck aren't killing Luisius, right? You're not going to kill the bushwhack. So yeah. you're just running into a situation where it's hard to play and choose fights unless you get a huge AoE spell. <laughs> so... Yeah, and hey, the, you're the running into a situation. Game here, the, the first ban on the, on the Hillbone side here is going to be uh, bushwhack, so... That's yeah, of course. Be happening there, again. There's, there's no reason why you wouldn't ban bushwhack, right? And I would like to say, here's the biggest thing that a lot of people forget, is that People tend to forget that when carry players have good games, it's because they have good supports behind them. And that's something that's like very imperative, right? The supports played good early on the side of agency. However, it's just when it started translating where, you know, Beans is playing you know, just good curse game, just good shields, good purges, good heals, bubbly bubby getting positions to play, just enabling Poyo Boy and you know Royal and Luisius to go crazy like that. Is super crazy, like just super good. So now we translate to the second game. We get an engineer ban, and here's the weird part. PHG post haste gaming, by the way, yet see post haste. Your name sucks. They banned bushwhack. That was their ban. Piz Dune banned a cursed. They banned. They banned flux. Piz Dune answered with a soul reaper ban. They do not want to see soul reaper again. They banned another yeah. scrap. Um, scrap is just an annoying hero in general. It's very useful heals, you know, Vorax just fist fighting towers. It's just is what it is. They're going to go for a first pick Sapphire. So the thing is, I don't know if this will be a Sapphire carry or this will be a Sapphire mid lane. It could be either or, right? That's one of those things where that's a, f a flex pick. You know what I mean? I think no it's, matter where they lane him, it is going to be a Sapphire carry. It's just if they play the carry from the mid to the bot lane. And yeah. Then. <clears throat> and just following so, up on the Bushwhack ban, they banned him first from from their own team, considering they played him because the Legion side have the first pick. So yeah, they exactly. Don't, they don't want to exactly. risk it. No, it's and you literally just saw how he performed, right? You literally just saw what he got to do with his mid lane. Switching around the lanes and having Soul Reaper go bottom to play with Whoop, and having Bushwhack being able to place a solo mid solo. I say with their quotes because he had a support behind him. Just he really didn't get punished. He just kind of. He kind of was stuck, you know what I mean? Like, Kraken had the stacks that were really good, just being able to play the game. But it really doesn't didn't really necessarily matter in the end, right? There's yeah. just too much, too much that they had to deal with. There's too much that they had to try and figure out. And it's just, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we're looking on the side of agency here. We got that Sapphire pick followed by a Magmus pick with a Nymphora pick. So we're gonna get the dreaded Nymphora. Ooh. You have a Monarch pick and a Kraken pick on the side of Post Haste Gaming. So, we're looking at a Kraken. Uh, get some Splish Splash, taking a bath. We got Monarch. Everybody hates Monarch. All my homies hate Monarch. Ban Monarch. And um, in, in many ways, Monarch is a stronger version of the Mental Shaman. He, the, the Chrysalis will always be a complete lifesaver for anyone he uses it on. And, and the Mental Shaman that we had a similar pick for the same role in the previous game will not be able to do the same in the later part of the game, where Monarch both was a W and his ult will have very very high utility so i think they're going to be following through with some of the same picks here the other thing too that you need to take in consideration about monarch is cleansing wind is just so good it's just such a good spell however i will say i'm not going to act like noxic cloud isn't good you know what i mean noxic cloud is also pretty good because you know the the noxus nightcrawler you know, the Noxus Nightcrawler being able to give you vision and play the lane a little bit different is pretty big, right? It, that's, that's pretty huge because it helps you play, you know, safety. Safety is really important when it comes to drafts, like especially if there's like a Pharaoh. So I dig that. And Crippling Paul being a mini stun, it's just annoying. <laughs> so good pick. Like you said, Crystallis is really, really strong. It's it's super good from a defensive point of view, and, and depending on what hero they pick for, for the carry role and help on, they can pick a hero that can actually do abilities from inside the Chrysalis that will be very impactful. So if they play something like a Parallax, he can do his solo rotation uh, while sitting in the Chrysalis and being basically uh, invulnerable. So we'll, we'll see where they go from here. But uh, Sapphire is definitely one of the, the most dangerous carries out there as well, alongside Bushwhack, so he could definitely uh, skyrocket in the same way that Bushwhack ended up doing. Yeah, and I think, again, it, it translates to what we were talking about before, right? The game was 100% dependent on how the supports played. In the early game, being played as well as it was by both supports on both sides really showed how important the impact of the supports were. And that's kind of what, you know, 
won them their game there, just being able to secure Luisius and Poyo Boy just having a free lane too. The super big. Like let's not let's not forget about that. I'm pretty sure Poyo Boy's JP if I remember, but let's not forget about him just having a good game and being able to drag aggro of two to three heroes and either kill one or survive and allow his team to play the map and come back. So, you know, it's super good. And we're looking at a gladiator ban. I know the gladiator just got buffed. Uh, according to Dutch, the buff is if you get hit by flagtation, flaggy waggy, you just die. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> we have a puppet master ban. Puppet master is just annoying. And I know it's a thought hero. So Hellbringer. I like the Hellbringer ban because, uh, I like dropping golems on people. A Gemini ban, an Electrician ban, and a Pharaoh ban. So Pharaoh not getting picked up within the first two picks because PHG, Mr. Post Haste Gaming, Bill Post Haste Nerds, um, they're opting to get the Monarch of the Kraken, right? So they're okay with passing away the Pharaoh there. Even though the Pharaoh did a lot of damage that game, they're willing to give that away to try and secure a pick that makes sense for them. So they're comfortable with their Kraken pick. So let's see what their third hero is answer wise. I think that's the big thing is we need a hero here that answers to Nymphora. Okay, so we have a Lord Self Forest pick and a Rift Walker. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, how do you feel about those two pickups? I'm not really sure. Uh, it could potentially be good, but but just looking at it, I think this is a, a weaker draft than they had last time. They're they're not going to be as consistent with landing their stuff. Uh, I think both Kraken and Riftwalker will potentially be able to whiff their abilities and miss them without uh, some proper setup from from other, some of the other heroes. And and Sephoris and Monarch just doesn't give them enough of that to be secure. So it's going to be very skill based if they land everything and, and line up their combos. Um, whereas their their previous roster was. Uh, extremely consistent and and very easy to execute once they they enter the team fight so i think they're sitting in a, in a weaker position now than the last game yeah and i think that's you know what you're saying is drafting is a huge part drafting is a huge part of how teams like to play right you have your comfort picks you have your non-comfort picks you have your specialty heroes you have all of that right and that's something that a lot of people when they go to TMM, right? And I say this nicely. When I go to TMM, they they do what they're comfortable with, what they're used to playing. They do what they like, no matter if it fits the draft or not. Comparatively, when you're looking into, you know, our tournament play and our scrim play and our draft play, it's okay to pick weaker heroes that you might not see in TMM that translate better to your drafting and your tournament games so that's why you'll see different things like yeah card dig trying nighthound right the idea was good they tried it it didn't work out but it still looked good because they executed the game plan right you need to have a game plan with your drafts and that's something that comes through slowly but surely as the game goes on right so we got a behe pickup for whoop on the off lane here and we have a magnus a good old magnus pickup for Looks like it's going to be a dual lane from from Legion side this time. Yeah. So. Calamity. And Calamity coming out as the carry from from Hellboom. So, fun little fact for you. Underscore XDD is a dirty, 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 dirty Calamity spammer. If you're wondering. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's not a usual pick. So so if you pick it, it's because the the individual likes it a lot. So <laughs> based on on your opinion, at least he uh, he seems to be good at it. Uh, it's one of his top fives, uh, for sure. It's uh, yeah. definitely one of his top fives. I think it's probably actually top three. So if you were a betting man, what? Just looking at the roster from each side from the draft, who would you go for? Well, I'm not a gamba man. I don't like to gamba. But if I had to gamble, it's really hard for me because I really want to really, 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 really want to root for agency because Whoop and Doze are my homies. However, Post Haze Gaming also has all my homies, so I feel bad for saying about either one. So I'm going to I'm going to cop out and say I just want them both to have a good game. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to choose, no, I think I think draft wise, like draft wise, I know that Post Haze Gaming has a weirder style draft and i know that within reason agency has more of a traditional so i would like to say agency 
because you know they have Nymphora stun, Nymphora TP, Nymphora heal. Even Poyo can only ult one person, right? You have Magmus Lo Lava Surge with PK being able to just make crazy plays. You have BK being able to stun and you know just make weird terrain for people to play, right? Um, and with PK, you know, big Dunkaronis. You got Pebbles, you just get a one shot, literally Rift Walker and Monarch all game. And then Sapphire, if Pizdoon could get a good start with a good carry, being able to build the items that he builds, if he can translate it into mid-game and push through, I think they'll be good. However, um, again, it's all relative. So I think he played the Fat Fairy on Nymphora, so I think they're going to win. I think that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the two teams are polar opposites almost. They're going to leave the top lane completely empty on Legion side and just set up on the bot lane. Make sure to, to get a good opener down here. We'll see if uh, if Kraken gets caught. So they put a lane ward to see if anybody would walk up or try and pull the wave. They haven't seen anybody in the lane yet. And they see Doze solo in mid. So they're either going to determine that there is somebody hiding in the trees or, you know, there's no one there and they're trying to set up on bot. So you can see that Kraken right now, Roro is just respecting it. He said, you know what? I'm not going to run the risk. I'm not going to walk up. So now Behe just showed pop. He saw him over the ward. So now they understand that the lanes have equalized and they are good to go. So Doze playing the Pebbles into the Lord South Forest. How does this matchup go? How does the forest and Pebble go? I don't really would. They're both melee, but I would like to. Oh, my goodness, Doze, you whiffed your stun, bud. Actually, no, it was a tactical whiff because he denied the range creep and got the range creep. Never mind. Doze smurfing. He's a super genius. I think if uh, Pebbles and Nymphora get to level 3 without too much complications, they will have the upper hand. They have a, a much higher burst and, and double stuns against a, a no stun lane with oh, skip oh, Sorry to cut you off, buddy, but look at top. Ooh. Wolf greedily walked up to pull the camp and was taking the damage from Bubby. Didn't really have any fear. Bubby uh, just popped Crippling Pollen, which gave the Clam to the chance to walk up and spin the dragons and just burn them down. So that's a good first blood pickup on the side of Post Haste Gaming. And that will be a Grave Locket instantly for our Monarch. So now our Monarch is uh, kind of having a really good start. Getting locked early, being all stack camps help out. It's pretty good. Now, on the side of Rift Walker into Nymphora and, Do and Pebbles. I know that Rift Burn's an annoying spell to deal with, but I don't think it really dictates them ever getting a kill unless they get rotations. So I think that lane is probably, as the kids say, Resident Sleeper. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, from, from the Hellpoint point of view, they, they will be harassing much more or be able to, to do spells at a range and, and do them a lot and see if they can do enough damage to push them out the lane. While from Legion side, it's going to be much more... Uh, Looking for that 100 to 0 burst with the Pebbles combo and then a forest on. And and Rift doesn't really have a response. Like, if Nefora catches Sephoris with a stun, uh, Rift can just stand there and watch, do a bit of damage, and watch Sephoris blow up. And bot lane here now, Kraken being caught. Looks like he gets away though. Get a little go on on Kraken. Also, Meg Love 83 getting a really good block on the pull camp earlier when Roro had a deep pull and he actually body blocked it and pulled the creeps back. Put Roro in a weird spot so they just couldn't walk up and, you know, get the creeps necessarily, but a good pull on the wave there to pull it out. So I think Kraken might be able to collect one or two. Should be able to collect some experience at least. So he should be pretty good. How's Whoop doing? Is Whoop struggle suffering? Uh, he's uh, sitting at a distance, similarly to Kraken, but he will eventually get experience when they start pushing into the tower. Yeah, so, poor Whoop only at 60 GPM right now, not really allowed to hit creeps, but again, Behe just needs some experience to get levels, and sooner or later he'll get PK, and PK is the, you know, the activating factor for Behe, right? As soon as you get PK, you're a hero. So, he might yeah. honestly just go Striders and try and roam and create pressure with um, Fissure. Right? If he can create pressure with Fissure, then you know, he might be able to pull ganks off and pull off some cheeky block angles. So, all right, guess it, Poyo Boy. RNG, does he get the rune? He does. He gets a regen. Regen. If that was me, I would have got the rune. Uh oh, cracking it on top. A nice little tackle going through the crystal. And Make Love stunning through to get the tackle inside the creep camp. So, not only does Pez Dude pick up a nice kill, he also picks up the whole jungle camp. Efficiency, indeed. All right. 
up top right now. The dragon's coming through. Just miss him, scraping his cheek, so he gets to walk away. He gets a pull, so he gets to hit level three. He's doing it, boys. He's almost there. Oh, he's in danger now. Uh, nope, he's just going to wall off the crippling right, haul so. in. He doesn't have an apple, so he can't dodge a dragon. An XDD coming through with the dragon, spinning through, melting him down, picking up another kill. That wall was really good to split the difference between that. Got the three creeps, got the stun, but sadly, Calamity just, uh, my boy, uh, kind of hit Ghost Marches and ran at him. There's not much you could do there. Yeah, and it's going to be a reoccurring threat for him going up to the lane. So I think the moment he gets Stridus here, he's going to have his two in a growth now. He will probably start roaming and, and sitting in the tower getting experience when Calamity starts to push. True. So, Poyo Boy is sitting at 350 GPM, so he doesn't have the escalated start that he had last time, but he still has income, which is important, right? Doze sitting at about 330, Sapphire sitting at about 400, 450 on the Calamity. Running the Behe behind tower, just trying to zone him with dragons, just trying to uh, make him respect the lane here. It's not looking bad. So Strider picked up by Magnus. He's going to go rot. So he's probably going to roam and try and create a gank somewhere. But I don't necessarily know where he can, you know, pick up a kill right now. Maybe on the Kraken. I mean, TP's mid. He's uh, being sneaky, sneaky right now. He fogged up magical fungus of disappearance. Veiled right. Uh-oh. Poyo Boy is actually... Timing, huh? Oh, man. He's actually getting revealed by Thawne here. And here comes a nice Magnus not coming through. Whoop G putting a nice Fissure down. But they don't have the damage because Doze wasn't prepared for this. Doze just needs to walk back to throws in four. There you go. Finally, he does it. So he's actually going to pick up the kill and the assist. And a nice kill coming through from Make Love 80. Three, so good uh, Strider buy there with a nice veil right. Oh no, Bubby, you were in the wrong neighborhood, buddy. Oh wait, but that doesn't matter. Poyo Boy's actually even say don't know. Clamity coming through, spinning dragons. Poyo Boy coming through with a big Q, throwing down some stink clouds and a melee. Poyo Boy trying to run down MMMMN, TPing the seal coming back with a good TP, but it doesn't necessarily matter. The more Satismia just killing down with a nice life tap, just bursting out. Whoop, getting the kill and securing nice kill, and then also getting a kill on the support. So again, killing the Rift Walker. Is nice, but losing the carries and oh my goodness gracious, they're just running under tower. They don't care. We're all charging Not through. Poyo Boy getting a nice little kill on top of it. Thon picking up the auto attack kill on top of Doze and Whoop. So they just said, you know what? I'm sick of your guys' stuff, and they just sprint at him under tower because you know a little bit of experience goes a long way. So Poyo actually just picked up those kills. He's sitting about 450 GPM right now. So that's the start of the escalation. So now we're gonna see necessarily where it goes. Dark Watch presence is big this game, but Undying is even bigger. So you're running into a situation where now the game's gonna start opening up, right? They can start playing together. And Pizdoon, he's just gonna keep crystalling these stacks, trying to get in something. Do you think Pizdoon's gonna try and go uh, Knuckles or Diffusal Blade to Shroud? What do you think would be the play? You think Gnaw would be good this game or no? I'm not sure what he's gonna go for. I think he's gonna pick some sort of a defensive item that gives him either uh, a defensive option like uh, Shrunken or something that gives strength through HP <clears throat> or magic armor. He needs something to survive. Like five stuns on the Legion side is gonna be super dangerous. So if he expects to be able to dodge all of them, he will be uh, probably wrong in the end. True. And Thought actually getting picked up off a Fissure kill after combo for so whoop gets to pick up some gold. Coop slowly trying to get some experience to come back in the game. He is level four right now. Sneaking but, guy know. here. They might meet. Maybe. So that's actually a really good tree walk by Bubby. A very good just trying to get into the trees they have fog but magma's coming through on south forest poyo boy actually ends up whiffing the lava surge it's not far enough a poyo goes through thought actually got a tp on the back end undying down on top of the magmas but i don't think it will be enough to kill him i think it'll actually be okay but thought getting the back tp crippling pawn come through on piss dude piss dude getting a little bit of damage bubby trying to get anything he can me 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 throws a little butterflies okay doze with a nice stun uphill getting the big pull but a nice pull coming in from rift rift just trying to throw us on the side crystal saving bubby but he's not going through poyo boy actually stunned attack on Whoa. Aww. Then the nice, okay, he's hitting the crystal one and the two. Poyo Boy, nice. Poyo Boy actually getting a nice life tap to survive to Piz Dude. Poyo Boy just trying to do damage. Whoop, coming through with a nice little enrage stop, actually stunning out Poyo Boy and getting the kill. And Do, or sorry, Rora showing up, getting a tackle on Whoop G, pushing him on the wall. So the trade was there, the kills were there. But again, I don't necessarily know if it comes out on Agency's favor. They lost Lord know. South Forest. South Forest lived literally forever, may I mention. And they end up trading four for one or three for one. It's not really worth it. Again, it's not the best. You know, a, there's a good cascade event, 
and there's a really, really good rift burn coming through, pulling it back off the hill, saving the uh, monarch to be able to crystallize herself, and the fight was just there. And this Salvoris is just, he's a monster right now, right? He's just, he's large and he's in charge. He doesn't have any crazy items, but, you know, he has the stout, right? The old iron buckler and a nice mystic vestments, and that was just enough to allow him to sit down and fight. And him getting out that clutch life tap to smack uh, the crystal, uh, but then smack Pizdoon to heal, so they stayed up a little longer. It's good. The decision making was good. They're cracking, getting Dove on a tower right now. A lot of surge coming down. Tackled onto the crystal. One, two, three, and four. Still shooting the crystal. And Pizdoon takes down Roro once again. Good little setup. I managed trying to get a little trade play. Put the crack it behind. I don't know, Thawne. You're in a bad way. So Thawne actually tries to dodge out the stun. He forgets that the stun's a little bit faster. If that was old seal, that wouldn't have worked. Pizdoon tackling him on the wall. Volatile Paul exploding. Shot down in the streets. So he actually dodged the stun and went back for the illusion. If that was the old Nymphora Zeal, he actually would have got stunned. He just didn't know the timing. Nice try, but that's a secondary kill pickup for Pizdoon. So Pizdoon actually went for the Knuckles like we talked about. He is getting where he needs to be. He is doing good for himself right now. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Last time we talked about him, I thought we were talking about Calamity. I think uh, Sapphire will be going for his round after this yeah. that would that would be no, the usual right. route you are good yep the, again that should be the usual route that should be what he gets but you never know kraken is sitting behind the tower again and for sitting there so he doesn't have a magma stun where he has a zeal zeal goes through double twice vault pod down he's just gonna tackle out he's not even gonna he's like, nope i'm not playing this game tsunami charge i'm i'm dip setting oh no calamity you're in a bad way uh oh magma's coming through the lava surge charging the channel all whoop throwing a nice fissure blocking away so the xd gets hit here comes piss dude coming with the nymph 4 tping on high ground tackling him against the tiniest tree in existence and picking up the kill on xdd boy oh boy is stacking or killing a triple stack so he's uh having the time of his life right now just trying to get some gold and now they're grouping mid. And again, that's the strength of Nymphora, right? Nymphora being able to just Absolutely. play the map wherever. And Pizdu getting a good tackle angle. Literally just having a good angle after the Nymphora stun was very, very important. And it worked out. <clears throat> so it's looking good. Yeah, I think right now Legion team just need to survive into the mid game. See if they can stabilize a little bit. Because they, they have the team fight potential, but right now they're being farmed off the map, and the few fights they have picked have been uh, been bad for them. Uh oh, Doze so throwing a stun out. Kraken getting a DD. Roar charging against the wall, but they don't know that Pizdu's coming behind with Nymphora. Roar is thrown on top, tagged on top of the hero. Another love search coming to get the stun, but another nice Crystallis to try and save him. But the thing is, they're just wasting time at this point, right? They're not going to be able to catch up. A crippling pawn coming through on the Monarch, trying to run away from Pizdu. Pizdu gives up the kill. Doesn't have the chance to pick up the kill on the Monarch. But again, that's just wasted time. And they're opening up the map. Again, XDD, Calamity, getting some farm on the map while that's happening. Roar goes down, which sucks, but Roar's not having the best game anyways. So it's not really necessarily the end of the world. I mean, Roar has Striders at this point, right? He's just trying to run around the map, run around the map, make plays. So he's just trying to get anything that he can get his little grubby hands on. And that is a gnome pickup by Poyo again. Some magic resistance, get some stuff in there. Yeah, Nymph has ult again, and they're killing the bot tower now, so I suspect we can see uh, an attempt on Sapphire's life with the Nymph port soon. Or yeah, Calamity probably in danger. Mid lane coming through. Make love getting ran down by Poyo Boy. A nice Rift Maker popping forward off a good channel of the R. Just enough on Wormhole to get up and pick the kill on the support. Not bad. An ice brand just picked up on the self force, which means we're either going to look at a Frostwolf Scar or a Dawnbringer again. Something along those lines. Doze's 800 gold off a of PK. As soon as Doze gets PK, then the game just gets that much harder because they can start one shotting the supports. And that will be a fun time for them, said no one ever. I think I think sub forest could be going for a shrunken head here. Looking at the Legion lineup, I don't think he wants to be. Uh... Be hit by too much of their abilities even with the gnomes that he has now so it might just well, be he bought shrunken. he did buy a nice brand did he sell it he might have sold it because he did buy it okay yeah well he at, at this moment he does not have it at least it might be in his inventory in the bank yeah he might have um he might have bought the recipe and then sold it everything anything is possible so a veiled ride again on make love just trying to find an angle to get a stun but they did scout him out with a ward so they kind of know he's there the monarch is Nope, honestly, I gotta get jumped on. Yep, Roar's aware of this. He sees this. They know this play's happening. Okay, maybe not. Maybe Roar's just like, man, whatever. No, he has 
Monarch next to him, so he's probably feeling confident. Lava Surge coming through, and a tackle. A nice deal coming through. Pizdu not burning tackle just yet. Crystal coming through. He's pushing. Oh my god, Pizdu actually tackled, got charged by Kraken, pushed into the tower. That is not what he wanted to do. Pizdu oh. stuck on top of Reese and Kraken. The illusion, guess what? Wall coming down, vault down, Pizdu popping R to be able to TP out. There's no punishment on that. Guess what? Magma's trying to run away. Zeal coming through a Poyo Boy. Poyo Boy in the back line trying to get anything. Magma's trying to run. He has Undying. Fade Ghost Marchers. Dink, and Poyo Boy gets the kill on Magma, so an okay trade there. That, that uh, TP on Sapphire is really good, but the one thing that happened was really weird. The Sapphire put down Crystal and attacked the Kraken as the Kraken charged, and it pushed him backwards into the tower. That was almost terrifying. And yeah, it is nice. Brand. That's what happened when. Yeah, okay, okay. So he's going for the ice Oh, be, okay. PK reveal by Doze. Doze one shot at the support. Whoop also having PK PKing in, slamming down a nice big old and Dunkaroni on Shockwave. But guess what? There's no crease of Poyo just gets to live for free. Thought Matt coming through with a nice cascade and a wormhole just trying to go through to get all the damage. So they burned everything to kill the support and Poyo Boy. But unfortunately, there was no creeps there for the waves to echo off of. So they might have guessed that someone was in the trees. So just not enough damage to kill the self forest there which is unfortunate so that'll be the pk reveal on doze and the pk reveal on our calamity he might be both here nope he doesn't have spirits to pull in yep yeah, <clears throat> yeah magma's had a full mana battery giving him pretty much a whole mana bar back yep unfortunate so I got the PK reveal on Whoop, PK reveal on Doze. Now here's the big thing. Magnus is 700 gold away from PK, and Sapphire has $2,600, 2,600 dude hairs, or crones, or whatever the currency is in EU. I forget what's what's British, what's London currency. Oh God, what is it? Ounce? <laughs> Euros, there we go, Euros. I'm gonna think about it. My brain turned off for a second, I'm sorry. He's holding on to some money, so I think he's trying to wait to see what item he wants to get to see what happens, but. We shall see. Yeah, I'm not sure he really knows himself what he will be getting, but I, I assume when he hits 3200, he's going to right-click his route and, and go nuts. True. Magnus, 150 gold off PK. Just uh, farming some bot camps, catches some pressure. Gonna get his PK. And as soon as he gets PK, then the team fights start opening up a little bit more. I think they've had good value on the Riftwalker, uh, considering that they don't really have like the strongest setup, but, but he's landed three or four pretty good ultimates on, on multiple people, secured a lot of kills, so my er early prediction ended up being, uh, being off for sure. They've had more value from that guy than I had expected. Well, the biggest thing about Riftwalker, right, is like it requires a knowledge to play. You have to know where you can and can't be, where you can channel your ult, like how to use your spells. So it's like, it's one of those things where it's like a niche pick and by me making it niche is people who are actually good at it. Cause I don't think a lot of people are good at Riftwalker to be honest. You see it and it's very much underwhelming most games, but this game, like you said, he's having a really good game and he has Jade Spire. So his casting is a little bit further, a little bit better. So he gets, you know, a little, some better stuff off. But Doze right now is actually peeking and trying to hunt, trying to make something happen. So Thon Magma is in the trees, just hiding from PHG, trying to bait out Poyo, but I don't know necessarily what he could do. He has a Veiled, so I think he's just trying to get a good alt angle on a lot of people. He's stepping forward, his Veil's broken. Whoop revealed, not going to PK and do anything. He's just going to cancel Fissure. Fissure going on the crease, blocking off, doesn't necessarily matter. Poyo's just trying to block off this tower to stop them from killing it. So if we get this tier 1 on mid, they're going to start having issues, because they're going to be able to start bouncing waves off the mid tower and the bottom tower, the tier 2 and tier 3. Or sorry, the tier 2, tier 2 on both lanes, and it creates them a little bit of more map pressure. But as you can see, Poyo boy, chicken boy, is not scared. He has his team behind him. I don't think they one-shot him, even if they try and go. There's five behind. Oh, okay, does a PK for it. Throwing him in T. Tim Dune, kick him off the curse of all time. going down. Cleansing wing doesn't matter. He gets CC'd the whole time. A huge release to crack him, but doesn't matter. Make off comes through the big four minutes. They're trying to get anything done. Roar dies out. Coming in, big dunk. Slamming the ground, going through Fisher. Picking up the kill on the backside. I thought double tap. XDD lives with literally four HP. Running away, but the team fight is huge. But guess what? Whoop, he's still getting chased down. Poyo boy, he's still alive. He doesn't care. He back and a big smack on Whoop to pick up the kill. The team fight was so good. The crystal tackle followed up by the nice setup on the three man stun on the lava surge but didn't matter and Whoop says nah that's my boy. Comes in with a fat four man slam a jamma. 
popping the fission on, securing the kill, but the fight just turned around so fast. XDD getting away with literally four HP. The auto attack for Sapphire not getting the kill. And guess what? Sapphire has 3,500 gold. If he bought any other component, he literally would have had the damage to kill Calamity there. Him stacking that gold and not buying an item literally just costed them the team fight. Oh no! Nymphora, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Crippling Pollen coming through with a nice old stink cloud of Morsetismia and a nice smack, and that's another pickup kill for Poyo Boy. Poyo Boy now has Dawnbringer. Uh-oh, this just got scary. And that was a really good team fight on mid lane from both sides. They really executed the kill on Sephora as well, and he instantly bought back, he came into the fight, and made the difference in the end again. And the Behemoth ult was really, really good, so very well True. done. And that's the thing, too, is you can tell by Poyo Boy, he is not afraid to play up there, right? He played up there, and he, it took them a while to kill them. They had to burn everything, and I mean everything, to kill them. Oh, no, Pizna, you tend to forget the Kraken has a beacon. Release the Kraken down on Pizna, but guess what? There's a nice self for Sapphire, but it doesn't matter. She's still throwing the Kraken. She gets pushed against the tower and dies, smacked down by Roro, and just sent to the lands beyond. Good pickup. Again, just Poyo not afraid to run in. Like I said, it took him like 15 seconds to kill this guy. They burned everything. And it's time this team just came up. And a good cascade events, by the way, that came from the backside with the wormhole from the rift that it just made that team fight what it was. You know, he couldn't get the monarch couldn't get in for Crystallis, but had cleansing win. So, but at the same time, it didn't necessarily matter, right? It all worked out in the end. And then you come bot and Piz Dune kind of throws out a crystal and gives himself away. And he instantly gets jumped on by the Kraken and just instantly just gets thrown into the dirt. It's kind of not really the best move. Nefortu playing top on top of the Calamity. Doze PKing forward. A nice little stun, a nice little throws. Yield down with a big pod. Doze trying to throw a right hook to kill the poor Leash. He doesn't get the kill. Doesn't necessarily matter. And it's stolen by the support player. Report my support player taking my kills. <laughs> That's a good kill. It's uh, something they really need. They need to have everything going right for them now if they want to get back into this game before they just get snowballed completely. Yeah, they need to start equalizing the map, and then you start getting answers for what's going on. And starting by killing that Calamity is super good. And Doze just picked up his first tick of spell shards, so now he's gonna start doing a little bit of more damage. Which is kind of what they need, right? They need that burst. He can one-shot the supports, but the supports are a little bit too tanky right now. Calamity, you know, having a Firebrand and a Searing Dawn with Knuckles and everything, having that HP stats really hard to one-shot him. And he gets Dawnbringer. It's going to be harder to one-shot him, but with the follow-up, I feel like it'd be pretty good. So, they got a Veiled Rock going through, just kind of minding their own business. Poyo Boy, again, he's just going to PK and run away. He does not care. A nice heal coming through. A very good wall block off by our boy, but it doesn't matter. Piss Dude gets scouted out, PK'd on, tackled into the wall, reached the Kraken. Magma's trying to ult through, trying to get a Lava Surge, but he can't. Just getting ripped down, ripped apart, and a Splish Splash. He's taking a bath. Punched him so hard, he went flying. And look at Poyo Boy. Poyo Boy's not stopping. He doesn't care. He's popping Ghost Marks. He's popping everything. A nice PK for by Roro. Roro just Slapping down the Nymphora, telling her to go on a diet. And again, another really good fight from the side of Post Haste Gaming. That wall block off by Whoop was absolutely massive, by the way, to save the Nymphora. But guess what? Pizdun walked a little too close. They didn't have the angle of Kraken. Kraken with a nice PK behind, pushing him on the wall, releasing the Kraken, putting him in the Whirlpool, and he just watched him drown. There's nothing he could do about it. Got stunned, couldn't pop bar, couldn't get out. He was just stuck. Even with BKB, it did not matter. They had the damage to kill him. And that's... It's just it's too much. They have too much of the gas tank right now. Again, Poyo Boy, he has no fear. He's just sprinting and running. He does not care. He runs at the enemy team with no fear. What are they going to do? Kill him? Nice try. Yeah, at this point, they, they can never meet 5 on 5. They need to somehow find a way to single out the, the Hellborn heroes and, and pick them off because they, they will never win a team fight now, even with perfect lineup. Okay, Whoop PK for trying to get down a nice little cat and slam on there with a nice little split. Doze going forward on a P XDD trying to tackle him through, but guess what? XDD lives. He pops me a battery vault coming down. Crystal down. A nice close off, getting a big double kill from the vault. He said, Bro, I'm a Pokemon trainer. I'm used to this. Slow down. Oh, Whoop oh, coming with a big dunk, smacking down the Makak, but ends up dying in the process. And then they call CC. They just want to kill the sword. They don't care. <laughs> But another really good game by the pickup, and man, I gotta tell you, Calamity pick there, it was good. But again, it just, Poyo Boy was just that factor, right? Poyo Boy was just the one who made, just, I'm gonna walk at you. I'm tanky, I don't care, nothing scares me, I'm just here. And, you know, the Kraken be able to follow up after even having a really bad game. Again, it just came down to when post-haste gaming 
put down their foot on the gas, it was just too much. Also, that's the first post haste they ever bought. It only took them forever. <laughs>